Good morning, welcome to Kids for Jesus. Here we are for our next week and uh, we're going to get started with the warm up. So I hope you've got lots of energy to do your warm up. We're going to go back to a song that we've not had for a little while. So we're going to be doing Put Your Hands in the Sky. You should know some of the movements already, but follow me and here we go. So let's get warmed up to get started. So what you need to do is just maybe march, just get moving. Brilliant, well done. You might want to get some jumping in there as well. And march, oh that's it. Make sure you don't hurt anyone as you're doing this. You might want to get some movement going, get those shoulders going. That's it. You want to get your hands up. Oh, you're going to get a bit funky as well. Come on, let's see you dancing. Fantastic. Shake those arms out. Okay, we're ready to go. Here we go. Put your hands in the sky. Get moving, get ready to fly. Here we go. Hands in the sky again. We're gonna go the other way this time. Here we go. Same again. Get plenty of movement. You gotta get rid of some of that energy. All flying, here we go. Last flying. Okay, you gotta get ready to jump. We're going that way first. Put your hands together. Shout yeah. Put your hands together. Ready for yeah. Okay, we've got a move. Get our movement. Start soon. That's it. Well done, that's fantastic. Okay, so we're done now, so get your breath back and we're ready to start for Kids for Jesus. So well done, everybody. Hi, children. Welcome to Kids for Jesus for this week. I hope you had a really great Easter break and enjoyed Ian's Kids for Jesus last week. We're still in Paul's letter to the Christians in Rome. And today we're going to be looking at the first 11 verses of chapter 5. But first, can you remember what Ian did last week? Firstly, can you remember the memory verse he taught you? Where was it from in the Bible? I hope you can remember it was from Proverbs in the Old Testament, just after the book of Psalms, chapter 3 and verse 5. But what did it say? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. What a great verse to remember. Ian spoke a lot about trust, didn't he? And he asked, who do you trust? He also said, anyone can become friends with God. And who did you look at from the Old Testament? Who is a great example of trust to us from that Old Testament? Can you remember it was Abraham, wasn't it? I hope you can remember some of his story, especially with his wife, Sarah. If not, why don't you check it out again for yourselves? It's in Genesis. Abraham trusted God and Ian asked two big questions at the end of Kids for Jesus. Firstly, are you like Abraham, trusting God? And if you are, how will that change your week? How will you live this week showing that you trust God? Maybe you can share with your leaders or with your parents some of the things that you've done and the ways in which you have changed because you're trusting God. As we learn from the Bible each week, my prayer for you, and I'm sure your leaders' prayers for you too, are that you hear God's word, understand it, trust it and live it. Now, some of you may have heard me say before something called head heart, hands. It's about understanding, trusting and doing. Now before we get into this week's teaching, let's have a song. During the recent Holiday Bible Club, and I hope some of you joined in, Juice Puppets gave us a wonderful song. It was teaching us some really big words and important words from the Bible about God. Can you remember what it was called? Big words that end in shun. Let me remind you of the chorus. Big words that end in shun. 
show us what the Lord has done through Jesus, his own son. Big words, big words that end in shun. I really enjoy this. Have some fun and try and remember what each of the big words means. It's going to really help you. God shows himself to us Substitution Jesus takes our place Salvation Sinners saved from hell Big words, big words And in insurance God sang the turn away Justification Just like we'd never seen Imputation Jesus' righteousness is mine Big words, big words And in the insurance What the Lord has done Listen to the big words Big words Words that show us What the Lord has done Listen to the big words Big words Resurrection Raised from death to life Redemption Sinners born by God Adoption Sinners made God's son I hope you really enjoyed that. And are you beginning to remember some of those big words with big meanings? And as you get to understand that, that's going to really help you to understand the Bible more and more. Now it's time for our Bible reading. And this week we have a special guest reader. It's Jemima from Juice Puppets. If you have your Bibles there, it's Romans chapter 5, verses 1 to 11, and it's on page 1317 of the International Children's Bible, if you have that one. So that's 1317. Okay, it's quite a way through. It's in the second half of the Bible because it's in the New Testament. Listen out in the reading for anything that tells us about being right with God or anything that God does for us and how. Romans chapter 5 verses 1 to 11 We have been made right with God because of our faith so we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ Through our faith Christ has brought us into that blessing of God's grace that we now enjoy and we are happy because of the hope we have of sharing God's glory and we also have joy with our troubles because we know that these troubles produce patience and patience produces character and character produces hope and this hope will never disappoint us 
because God has poured out his love to fill our hearts. God gave us this love through the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to us. Christ died for us while we were still weak. We were living against God, but at the right time, Christ died for us. Very few people will die to save the life of someone else. Although perhaps for a good man, someone might possibly die. But Christ died for us while we were still sinners. In this way, God shows his great love for us. We have been made right with God by the blood of Christ's death. So through Christ, we will surely be saved from God's anger. I mean that while we were God's enemies, God made friends with us through the death of his son. Surely, now that we are God's friends, God will save us through his son's life. And not only that, but now we are also very happy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through Jesus, we are now God's friends again. Did you listen really carefully? We'll be thinking a little bit more about the passage shortly, but first I want us to think a little bit about enemies becoming friends. Can you think of any examples? Maybe stories that tell us about enemies becoming friends or someone doing something really bad towards others and then it being sorted out and the problem being fixed. Now this might be quite a hard one, but you could perhaps pause the video for a few minutes and chat with your parents or chat with your leaders if you're in your group meeting, depending on who you were with. Maybe you could think about some of the people we looked at a few months ago. Can you remember those people that we looked at who had changed lives? Their lives were completely changed after meeting Jesus. Can you remember who they were? There were five of them. There was Peter, there was Paul, you remember Nicodemus, Zacchaeus and the Samaritan woman. Or maybe you can think of someone in a story. I thought of one actually. I thought of, I don't know whether you've read it or not, but I thought of Edmund in the line, The Witch in the Wardrobe, when he worked against his brother and sisters and against Aslan the Lion and his followers. It would be good to spend some time thinking about how things were put right what mended things and what made the friendship possible again. Our passage today tells us that it is Jesus who makes things right with God. Can you say how Jesus makes us, can you see how Jesus makes us right with God? In verse 6 it says it is through Christ dying for us. In verse 8 it says but Christ died for us while we were still sinners. In this, God shows his great love for us. Wow, isn't that incredible and amazing and fantastic? While we were enemies of God, while we were sinners, Jesus died for us. Verse nine, it says, we've been made right with God by the blood of Christ's death. Can you remember what Jesus' death and rising again does for us? It says it in verses 10 and 11. Maybe have a quick look there. It says, we are changed from being enemies of God to being made friends with God. I hope you're as excited about that as I am. It's absolutely brilliant. Now, it's just like we saw over Easter, isn't it? Jesus has done everything, everything needed to rescue us and make us right with God. So what? So what can we learn from the start of chapter five of Romans? Now, I think there are four things I would love you to understand. Firstly, that we've been made right with God by believing and trusting in Jesus. Secondly, we have peace with God through Jesus. Now that's a really good opportunity for you to explore with your parents or with your leaders, what does peace with God mean? Thirdly, we have hope and joy, even when things are difficult. And lastly, and fourthly, that we are now friends with God through Jesus. Well, we're gonna pray now. 
So why don't you put your hands together, listen very carefully to my prayer, and again, as I always say, if you agree with my prayer, then why don't you say Amen at the end? Let's pray. Dear God, thank you that you love us so much. Thank you that you sent Jesus so that we can be friends with you instead of enemies. Thank you that Jesus has made us right with you through his dying and rising again. Please help us to live as your friends and tell others of how amazing you are. Amen. Now, I'll be back next week with another Kids for Jesus. But meanwhile, continue to stay safe, take care and God bless.